All right, so we've got in front of us today, this gun was sent in. This is an impulse, a really pretty impulse. This is a purple and green polish impulse. The customer is saying that um, there's some bolt drag or the bolt is grinding against something and that the eyes aren't working. So <coughs> I'm gonna take it apart and um, look at it. Now, if I if what's happening in here is what I think is happening in here, um, this applies to a ton of different guns. Uh, the uh, stack tube poppet design gun, where you've got a ram assembly down in the bottom, and you've got a bolt that is attached to the ram with a pin right here, or linkage of some sort. You can run into this problem very easily if it's what I think it is. But we gotta take some things apart and see first. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take these grips off and just kind of have a look-see in there. We'll see if uh, it has a battery and then we'll move on from there. We'll turn the gun on. I'm not going to gas it up because I don't know what's going on with the bolt yet. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Put a battery, do I have a battery somewhere? I think I have a battery right over here. There we go. And then we're gonna power on the gun. Man, the eyes definitely aren't reading anything. So we gotta figure out what's going on with that. I can turn the, I can shut the eyes off and the solenoid activates, which is a good sign. So at least the solenoid's working, board is working as, well, we don't know how the board's working. The solenoid's activating and we can shut the eyes down. So we gotta figure out why the eyes aren't reading uh, anything in the breech. Yeah, so it just goes to eye fault automatically. If I go here, eyes off. It's reading ball in breach right now. And then eye fault. And I definitely, the bolt is not in the breach. So the bolt's not causing the issue right there. So let's start with the bolt and see. Now, just by looking at it, I can see right here that there's a lot of scraping on the top of the bolt right there. So I'm gonna unlock the bolt. And I'm, oh, I'm going to bring it out and I can see the amount of gouging that's on the bolt right here. None on the bottom, but a lot on the bolt top. So I know what's happened already. I don't even need to look in this gun here. I, I know exactly what has happened, what has caused this already. And it's such a common issue, and I'm gonna show you what happens. But, just to be sure, I'm gonna look. And yes, I can see it already. If I put my finger in here, and I'm feeling along the top, so I'm feeling up here, like along the top of it, but I wanna feel underneath it. And there's a lip on the inside, on the bottom. So I'm just running my, finger along the upper surface of the upper chamber but on the inside to feel because that's the part that's riding against this bolt right here and I'm feeling it and it's mushroomed right there and if I look inside here it might be a little hard for you to see it but actually no I think you can see it right here you see how this is shiny right here that this is silver right there well that happens for one reason, and one reason only. Let me pull this apart, and I'll show you why. And a lot of you probably watching this already know why. But, just in case you don't, let's look at this. Let me clean this real quick. All right, 
So here's our RAM, right? Our bolt connects to our RAM like this. And then our bolt cap sits back here. So when you gas the gun up, put air into it, goes through. Air goes inside this section of the RAM, pressurizes it and causes it to slide backwards like this. When you pull the trigger, the air that's being applied to this section right here is turned off and air is applied to the back section, which drives the RAM forward. Because the bolt and the RAM are hooked together, they travel together. Now the tip of the RAM, when it gets far enough forward, it'll strike the valve, which is inside here. The valve opens because this pushes it open and it allows air that's being stored up in the front of the gun here to come up through the valve, go into the bottom of the bolt and come out the front of the bolt and push the ball out. So what has happened to cause this problem is the bolt had been removed and taken out and then the bolt had been installed back in the gun like this, where the pin, the linkage, instead of being in the slot where it needs to be, was in front of the bolt, or the ram, sorry. So when the ram drove forward this way, it took the pin sticking down and it slammed it against the body right here. Normally, this bolt does not touch the body, but because it was, you know, a quarter of an inch in front of where it's supposed to be, there's nowhere for it to go. It bang, 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 slammed against the front of the body and caused that to mushroom. So it dented basically this um, body right here and it caused it to flare out on the bottom. And then next time you tried to put the bolt in, it's just gonna grind it up. And this happens so often in this style gun and not just an impulse but it can happen in any planet eclipse lv uh, or um ego gun so an lv any of the standard egos any bob long gun any any version of a gun where a pin connects to a ram like this if you put it in incorrectly you run the risk of doing this and it definitely happens quite often now there's really nothing wrong with it at this point. It's not, it's not ruined or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file and I'm going to file the inside of this lip down so that it's not scratching against this anymore. And that's it. Problem is solved. What we don't want to have happen, and it doesn't look like it has, which is good, is because this is striking, smashing this way, sometimes this head can get bent up. And if it doesn't stay, I can look at it while it's rolling and see if it's like wobbling as it rolls. But it looks, it looks fine. So it hasn't bent the head. That could cause a problem too, because when this comes forward, if this is not flat, it's gonna strike the valve at an off angle and then eventually create some more problems as we're going along. So that seems fine. Everything else seems fine. We just need to clean this up a little bit. So let's do that first. So let's solve one problem at a time. That, and then I'm going to need looking for one of my smaller files. I have a file that is rounded. It's not flat. No, not that kind of round. That's really round. It's flat but round, if that makes sense. There we go. See, this side is flat right here, but this side is dome-shaped. That's what I want. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 
paper towel. And I'm going to put it down in here. And what I'm trying to do by doing this is I just want to keep um, any metal shavings that I create. You can see I'm just trying to push it down inside here. Like that. So when I file this down, I don't want all the filings to drop inside here and then contaminate this bottom section. I just want to keep, um, keep them in the front. And then I'm also going to take some paper towel and stick it down the front here. Because there's a hole where the air needs to come up through into the bolt. And I don't want filings to go into that hole either. pretty much all that taken care of. I'm going to take my file and this unfortunately is the only way to save this 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 issue. Nobody wants to see a gun get filed. I get that. I don't really want to file a gun. But got to do what you got to do. feeling it. Just to make sure that I don't feel a lip on there anymore. that feels much better. I don't feel it anymore inside there. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Just get the shavings off from this side. I'm going to push the towel out through there. Get that one out. swab through there before I remove that lower one just in case there's anything in there get that out of there well that was a dirty swab And then I'm going to pull this lower one out of there and then try to wipe it down again. All right, now I'm going to take the bolt without hooking it up to the pin and look at that. Easy. No restrictions. All right, so I've started to take the eyes off. The bolt issue we solved. So now that slides easily through with no issues right there. Now we're checking on the, um, the eye issues. So we're gonna get our eyes out. My GoPro's been having all sorts of problems connecting to things. So if it decides it wants to turn off again, you might see it pick up in a different kind of spot, but hopefully not. Um, all right, so we'll get that off of there. I know the spacing on the eyes, especially the wiring, getting the wiring down into the gun 
There's not a lot of space in there. So we want to see what's going on because it doesn't look like there's um, paint or debris or anything in there. So we're going to see if that is potentially causing the problem. Although, actually, I think you might have had them in upside down. Let me just look at something real quick. No, nope. that's crazy. I thought he just maybe had accidentally flipped them over when installed. Nope. I wonder if one of these is broken. Anyway, all right, well, now we know what we need to do. We need to get it apart and check the where the wiring is going down into the gun. That's always fun getting these apart. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to disconnect our solenoid wire and our eye wire. I'll pop those up. Like that. I'm going to undo our frame screws. When it comes to these older, or not older, this impulse, I mean, this is an older impulse, but it is the mo most recent generation impulse. Um, I don't have a lot of parts anymore. So, see what the best, I'm gonna do this in a different way. I'm gonna take this off of here. I'm gonna pull this bottom off of here. And this will allow me to get these this frame off without really smashing anything too bad so right now I'm just looking for any damage I don't see any wire damage, so that's weird. Maybe one of the one of the sensors went bad. few parts I still have left because I don't have a lot so what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm putting this in the right way I am and then I'm going to just see if I can get the eyes to work outside of the body here. Straighten them out a little bit. So I can, if I, maybe you guys can see this. So here's my eye display right now. Let me see if I can Move it a little bit further away from you. Might be even like this. I want to see the end here. 
So you can see that it says I fault. If I put this in front of the other one, it re it changes to um, I open. And if I move it away, it goes I closed, I open, I closed, I open. And if I put my, I'm gonna try to do I open here. It wants to slide off my finger. So I open, and then I'm gonna put my finger in front of it so I can get it to read. So I think there's one of these bulbs may be bad or one of the sensors could be bad inside of there. So that's, luckily I have these this particular part still. So now what I'm gonna do is I know the board works now just by looking at it with this set of sensors in there. So now let's get these out and we'll try to figure out what's going on. We might just need to replace them. Now that these ones are out, let's just see what happens if we put this in. Yep, I get nothing. just constantly reads blocked so that's it so we need to replace the eyes which really is no fault of anybody's that just those eyes failed they went bad um, not much we can do about that Now we'll get these eyes back in and then we'll see what happens. We'll come to this side because this is the side that has it. Give ourselves plenty of space. These eyes kind of snap in like that. And then they just kind of fit in there. Put our detent back in there. I'm gonna move the wiring out of the way so that I can get my screw in there. This one, they typically run to the other side so that it can come up right on top here with the solenoid wire. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side. It's going to run right down through here. here All right, so now our eye is in there. We've got our wiring right here.
tucked as best we can. Out of the way so that we don't smash it into anything. Again, this is very tight spaces here. sure that these are flat is probably out of all the guns that are out there the trickiest one with wiring especially for the eyes because it is really really easy to um, to pinch them and crush them so just be careful if you've got one of these and you're taking your eyes on and, or your frame on and off, just be real careful. All right, so now we kind of got to tuck our wiring. to turn it beforehand but kind of wanted to go back there we go now let's look got an open eye closed eye open eye closed eye open closed open closed doesn't shoot shoots and then goes to eye fault which it should because my finger is still in the breach. My finger hasn't cleared the breach, so it thinks my finger is still in there. Now you can take that. Make sure that's in there properly. And I think that puts this back together to a point where the ticket says the problems are solved. So the gun was here because the bolt was scratched and the eyes didn't work. Because there, I think. I'm gonna check and see if I have a different C clip for that. I did, but I don't. That's okay. All right, so now let's see how it works, if it works. from the bottom. So we gotta solve that leak problem. You don't want a gun back leaking. But let's turn the eyes off.
Sometimes those come off way easier than other times. Pull this out real quick just because it's easier to work with. When it's not attached to the gun. Boy, that's on there. So this, I need to unscrew out of here. So I want to get, I got to get this core that's inside there out. Normally this piece just comes right out. So I'm going to try to hold on to it better and get that out of there. I'm going to move this a little bit. get a better field of view here. That's better. That's really on there. I'm going to put this in the vise. I'll be right back. Take that one out of there. All right. So now we got to get out. There's a little C clip inside here that once you get it out, you're really never going to get it back in there. But all that does is just keep you from being able to unscrew this all the way down, which we really shouldn't be doing anyway. All right, so if we have a leak coming from the bottom, basically we have this leaking out of the middle, then one of these O-rings has failed on here because this is what keeps air from getting this way you got your little bottom right here which goes on here like this air comes in you can see it's released through that hole inside there so these o-ring that bottom o-ring and that top o-ring keep the air sealed inside of here and force the air into those holes right there and then the air goes into this which is adjusted inside of here like that and if air can get out the bottom that means that this o-ring right there has gone i've had enough and has failed so we got to get this one off or not maybe that it failed, but it has um, some sort of debris on it or something that caused it to kind of just give up. I'm 
of sizing that out. Looks to be like a seven on the bottom right there. So let's get one of those and put it on. Now this can be fun trying to get these o-rings on because they're um, a stiffer o-ring and they typically don't like to spread over things. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to pull, I don't want to do this. This will actually make it easier. We'll see. We'll see how this O-ring does. Real easy to stab yourself with these. Hold it and then go around. Probably my least favorite o ring to deal with. I set it in a vise too and do it, but it's more fun to watch me struggle with it. And this whole time I'm doing this, I gotta be real careful not to like poke or chip or cut this o ring either. Because then I'm back in the same spot I was. If I put a big gash in it, what good does that do the work I just spent trying to fix it? Put it back together and see if it works.
Oh, and I gotta replace that one too. Probably doesn't even need to be replaced, but we might as well, since we're inside there. Checking the reg seat on the piston, that looks fine. Put this back together, just not crush it like it was before. This guy's grip on here. I don't know how he had that on there before, probably the other way. I've got the reg turned off right now. Leak's gone. No more leak. Now it's just down to setting pressure. With reball, typically reball is 20 FPS over. R roughly, I'm going to say, usually, um, not always. Let's see where we're at now. It's better, 308. 
that's going to put us under. I'm going to bring it down. So we're three, um, like 300 with reball. That's going to put us at like 280 ish. That's 290 right there. So that's going to be, you know, 270. Turn it up just a little bit. There we go. 297. So this one is done. So we had an error that was user induced error. First off, which was the bolt issue, we fixed that. And then this is just, it just failed. This piece failed. Maybe one of these connections has gone bad where it's, well, actually I can kind of see that one right there. So this side of it right here looks like it's a little rusted on that side. And maybe that's causing the problem. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But one way or another, this eye set failed. We replaced it, replaced some O-rings, gun's done, I'm ready to go back to its customer. This problem at the top though, I'm telling you guys, you can um, avoid so many problems by just making sure your pin is locked into your RAM properly and you can solve a lot of issues. So, see you in the next one.